let's face it, previous Lexus RXs, and there've been three generations in Australia since 2003, and an early one if you're watching this from abroad, have always felt a little bit like Toyota Klugers in drag. Lacking sufficient charisma and talent, the previous iterations didn't have the dynamics, sophistication, or comfort to take on rivals like the Audi Q7 and BMW X5. At least Lexus had the uniqueness and nerve to release a hybrid version way back in 2006. Now there's an all new RX and it's had quite the transformation. But is it any good? Let's find out. Before we do that though, don't forget that you can read the full review at carsguide.com.au. Now let's get down to it. Like everything else, it costs a little bit more to get into a new RX nowadays. In fact, some $15,000 more because the old RX 300 two litre turbo has been displaced by the RX 350H hybrid as the new base entry level model. But Lexus says there's more than enough extra features to offset the price hikes. Exclusive to the 350H grade, the base luxury two-wheel drive kicks off from $87,500 before on-road costs. All-wheel drive is optional. Standard features include three-zone climate control, electric and heated front seats, synthetic leather upholstery, a 14-inch touchscreen with satellite navigation, six USB ports, a power tailgate, and 19-inch alloy wheels. Next up is the decidedly more extravagant sports luxury. It switches to 21-inch alloys, variable suspension damping for a comfier ride, leather trim, and reclining rear seats with heating and ventilation, except for the poor kid squeeze in the middle, of course. Finally, the self-explanatory F-Sport adds darkened highlights, uprated brakes, a surround view camera, adaptive LED headlights, and a banging 21 speaker audio upgrade. So, is the new RX good value for money? Undercutting most rivals, while not scrimping on features, it's hard to argue otherwise. Now, how different the new RX looks depends on which angle you're looking at it from. The front tracks and body are wider, and it's got this new spindle body grille, which is meant to have a 3D effect. And this is gonna carry on to all future Lexuses, apparently, by the way. Yet in profile, the new RX is quite hard to distinguish from its predecessor. It's still got that floating roof style, which is quite sleek, but the wheelbase has been stretched. And now, as a result, there's 60 millimeters more interior space, and that benefits rear seat passengers. And speaking of the rear, I reckon the new rear light treatment, which is a full strip effect like you find on the new NX, is this car's prettiest angle. At nearly 4.9 meters, the RX is deceptively long and quite roomy as a result. Step inside and you're greeted by a modern, attractive and functional dashboard that looks and feels upmarket, regardless of grade. Sumptuous front seats provide loads of squishy, cushy comfort as well as adjustability to help find the right driving position. While not especially distinctive, the instruments are clear and informative, offering a wide array of data. Pleasingly, the multimedia home screen introduces shortcuts for navigation, audio, vehicle settings and phone operation. And now there's a Hey Lexus voice control function. Easy. So much for the sensible stuff. There's a lot in here that really appeals to the emotions, the senses, um, that adds a sense of opulence and luxury to the car. For instance, the big 14-inch touchscreen is great to use. It's, you know, it's easy to see. It just really sets off the interior as a modern thing. The dashboard has a width, a sense of width that helps uh, provide a feeling of extra space. Uh, Lexus says that Vision hasn't been improved by having smaller pillars and uh, less obstructive elements. Uh, but I think my favorite thing is the fact that this finally has gotten rid of, what, 30 odd buttons compared to before. It's gone from 80 to 51. That's a good thing. Although, of course, there are still buttons such as for volume control, which are very happily included because no one wants to 
uh, fiddle around with touchscreens for those sort of things. Uh, but <laughs> I think the funniest thing is it also has ambient lighting that includes settings such as exhilarating, uh, relaxing and arousing. But it isn't all cocktails and vegan caviar in here though, as the infuriating capacitive touch cruise control buttons prove. Located on the steering wheel spokes, they're torturous to use, ridiculously fiddly and totally distracting. What an annoying throwback to the infernal mousepad controller found in the old RX. No thank you. Otherwise, the RX is a doddle to live with and enjoyable to drive on a daily basis, with almost everything in its place. And a place for almost everything. Almost. You know, Lexus has really thought about the family as far as the RX is concerned. Earlier I said that the wheelbase has been stretched. That means that there's 60 millimeters more legroom and I am sitting behind my driving position and I'm 178 centimeters tall. And as you can see, I have ample space for my knees. Uh, headroom's good, e even though this has got the panoramic roof option. Uh, and there's a lot of amenities that I really appreciate, such as airbags, ISO fix uh, latches and um, overhead lighting, grab handles and door pockets, which are really deep, are also included. And great news for family car buyers, the latest RX has a larger boot. It now measures at 612 litres. Uh, there's a long flat floor for you to put all your wigs in. And as like most uh, luxury SUVs, you can recline the rear seats either via a handle or electrically pressing this button. In this particular car, you just press it once and down it goes. Smart thinking, Lexus. I just want to hammer home that Lexus was the first maker in the world to offer a hybrid system like this in any sort of SUV, let alone a luxury one. And like I said at the start of this video, the 350h hybrid is now the least expensive RX. As per the Toyota RAV4 hybrid, it uses a 2.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine mated to an electric motor and nickel metal hydride battery. Driving the front wheels via a CVT gearbox, it offers up to 184 kilowatts of power and 270 Newton meters of torque. The sprightlier E4 option adds a second electric motor on the back axle to provide all wheel drive. Both zip from zero to 100 in about eight seconds. Next up is the RX 350, which swaps out the hybrid tech for a 2.4 liter turbo petrol engine driving all four wheels via an eight speed auto. With 205 kilowatts and 430 unit meters, it needs 7.6 seconds to reach 100. Finally, there's the RX 500H hybrid, combining the 350's 2.4 liter turbo with two electric motors, one on each axle, and a unique six speed auto for a combined 273 kilowatts and 460 newton meters. It's rapid too, hitting 100 in just 6.2 seconds. On all models, suspension is the tried and tested McPherson style struts up front and a multi-link rear arrangement. Okay, the moment of truth. Is the new RX as good to drive as it is to look and sit inside? I'm in the 500H performance, F performance, and I'm starting from the top rather than the bottom because that is probably the newest and most exciting uh, aspect of the car. So, uh, look, acceleration is what this thing's all about, and acceleration is what it does really well, as you would expect from a performance flagship. Uh, it has a six-speed automatic transmission, but not a torque converter one. It has a clutch for the automatic, a wet clutch, and a clutch for the electric motor. And together, they deliver very smooth and seamless, rapid acceleration. Like, you put your foot down and it goes. And it's accompanied by a quite evocative, sporty noise. It's a bit turbine. It's definitely still in internal combustion and it's quite evocative. Like you drive and you think, wow, this thing really 
has got you know a few herbs and spices underneath the bonnet. Um, it's particularly strong when you want to overtake. You put your foot down. Uh, it just it just thrusts forward as you would expect, and it has the sophistication and refinement that you would come to expect from a Lexus. So in terms of ride comfort, really small sharp bumps are felt, uh, and it can feel a little bit busy on uh, on some less than smooth roads, but it's nowhere near as bad as you know older RXs with larger wheels were, and it's definitely good enough. Um, there's a little bit of tire noise that comes through, but ultimately it's, it's quite an evolving car to drive. Now, moving down the list, there's the RX 350. Now this one has the uh, turbo petrol engine, uh, made it to an eight speed torque converter gearbox and all wheel drive. So uh, th that's probably your most traditional of all the RXs in terms of powertrain packages. And you know what? It does exactly what you expect to do on the tin. Uh, it's uh, it's fairly frisky off the line. It loves a rev. It's quite loud doing it. I wouldn't say it's coarse, but it's not super smooth. Um, but what you're aware of is that the lack of electrification, so the lack of hybrid in that car, um, makes it seem a little bit sluggish if you want to accelerate quickly. But the 350h, that car has the best of both worlds, in my opinion, because not only does it feel stronger in terms of acceleration than the turbo version, uh, the 350 turbo, it also has exceptional fuel economy and efficiency. It has that a well of torque it draws upon, so you can um, you can rely on it to to feel you know to provide instant oomph when you need to accelerate. It does it smoothly. Um, it doesn't sound quite like a sporting engine should, and it's not meant to be. It's meant to be something that you buy for efficiency as well as, um, as acceleration as required. But it does it so well. It does it so seamlessly. It's hard to fault. It, it, just, it, it just feels the all-wheel drive that I was driving, as well as the two-wheel drive version that I'm in right now, it feels planted. Um, it steers with um, a, a fair degree of um, accuracy and sharpness. Um, it, it rolls a little bit, you know, it leans a little bit in corners if you're on it, but, you know, sitting on the standard 19-inch wheel and tyre package, it rides well enough, uh, it, it, it handles um, certainly well enough, and it's got ample road holding. So I would say that's my pick. It's also... Uh, the least expensive out of the uh, RXs to drive, so out of the three RXs, my money would be on the 350H. Having said all that, a bit of the old RX does come through, especially in the way it has light enough steering for effortless parking. Likewise, it's all typically Lexus in being so smooth and quiet, except that the tyres do rumble over some coarser bitumen. But the real difference between old and new is that the RX is now so much more controlled and refined. And for that, we're grateful. No shocks here, the RX 350 Turbo slurped 11 litres per 100 kilometres over our launch drive route, which took in both peak hour traffic jams and rural highway runs, compared to 9.6 litres for the 500 Hybrid Turbo and just 6.4 litres for the 350H Hybrid. So, how do these figures compare with the official ones? Well, quoting the Pretty Lax NEDC numbers, the 350 should average 8.7 litres, the 500H a frankly surprising 6.5 litres, while the EcoFocus 350H shines at just 5 litres per 100 kilometres for the two-wheel drive and 5.4 litres for the all-wheel drive version. Both RX hybrids can drive silently in electric only mode stepping off the line at low speeds or when coasting along and that's really impressive. Less so is every RX's thirst for more expensive 95 Ron premium unleaded petrol. At the time of publishing there wasn't an ANCAP crash test rating for the latest RX but the R1 tested back in 2015 
managed a full five-star result. We're expecting a similar outcome, especially due to the Lexus's stiffer, stronger and lighter body, along with a slew of fresh safety-related features. But my favourite safety feature is Safe Exit Assist, which uses the blind spot monitoring to stop the door from opening so cyclists like me won't get doored as they whiz by. Lexus offers a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty with roadside assistance. Now that's pretty standard fare nowadays. Furthermore, hybrid versions of the RX include a 10-year unlimited kilometre battery warranty. Service intervals are at 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, whichever come first, while the RX offers three years and 45,000 kilometres of cap price servicing, with each one costing owners $695. Now that's pretty competitive for a luxury brand. So, is the latest Lexus RX good enough to stay or should it sashay away? The fact is, this latest model is hugely better than the model it replaces with a level of sophistication and refinement as well as comfort that you just didn't get before. Few can match the family-friendly RX's combination of customer service, glamour and opulence. The transformation from lowly Kluger to serious contender for the BMW X5 crown is, after 20 long years, finally a reality. Here's my score on the screen right now. Far from being a drag, Lexus RX, Shantae, you stay.